Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 17 of my fitness database series. If you haven't watched parts 1 through 16, go watch those first. And as a reminder, whether you care about tracking fitness and food and exercise and all that stuff, that doesn't matter. I'm teaching you really cool stuff about Microsoft Access that will apply to any database. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm very happy with how this turned out. One form, we got it like this. Now the meal list, we got the same situation going on. I wanna, I wanna have this one form with the list of meals up top and then the details down below. Now the problem is, this is gonna be a little more complicated because this is already a continuous form, right? And so having this in the footer of a continuous form with a sub form, that's gonna be tricky. I think it'd be easier to go the other way around and to take this and make this a sub form in this guy's header, right? Because also this stuff isn't editable over here, right? The records from this form are from an aggregate query meal list queue, which is here, right? We, you can't edit this no matter what you do. Even if I join this to another query, as soon as an aggregate query is involved, you lose the ability to edit it, add new records, all that stuff. So we could take this and we can make this a header subform up top here, basically make it look like this. And so they both behave the same way. I want the whole database to behave, you know, every form should behave similarly. So there's not like two different interfaces, right? But we're gonna have to make this a subform inside of this guy's header. Are you with me? Okay, it's a little trickier. I don't think I've ever done this before in one of my videos, but we're gonna do it today. All right, let's close this. Now, let's go to design view over here. And there's a header section right there, but it's shrunk up. So let's open that up. So we got some room to work with here. And I'm gonna take that, what is it? The meal list F, right? We're gonna drag that and drop it up in here. We're gonna get rid of that label. And then we're going to resize it. I'm going to leave a little room just for now so we can see it. But later on, I'm going to make it take the whole space so there's no room around it. Just so we can see exactly what's going on here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because we can. Just like so. This is one label, so we'll just put a bunch of spaces in there. All right, let's save that. Close it. And let's see what we got. Okay, oh, oh this button is opening up this guy, which is still opening up that guy. <laughs> but you can see back here what's going on. I'm only seeing one record. We'll address that in just a minute. First, let's fix that button, the meal list button. Come over here. We don't need you to open up the meal list. We just need to open up the meal F. Save it. I'm going to close this. Pro Sometimes when I'm working on stuff on uh, off camera, I, I use this Project Explorer a lot, but I don't use it as much in my videos. Um, okay, so that fixes that. That'll open up the right form now. Okay, let's slide it over here. Now we can get rid of the form current event in this guy. So click on it once to get the sub form, click on it another time to get this form's properties, then open that up and you should see the form properties over here. We don't need this on current event. Actually, what we're gonna do is, we do, we do need the on current event, but we're gonna do something different. All right, so instead of opening up this other form, get rid of that, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna say, based on whichever record you click on in here, I want to filter the parent form to show that record, right? So if I click on Rick's Coffee or Rick's Breakfast, I wanna show that down here. So it's kind of going backwards because normally the parent controls what's, this, what's shown in the subform. We're going the other way around. Okay, in fact, we don't want the parent to control the subform. That's why we're only seeing one record. So make sure, let's do this first. Let's go up here. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, sorry. Let's go up here. I get excited about this stuff. <laughs> let's click on the subform object and go to data and see here we got the master and link child fields. Get rid of those. Okay, because this is actually going to control the parent, not the other way around. But this parent still controls this subform because this has the details for the meal. See, this is the meal list that's going to control what parent record shows and the parent record is still going to be linked to this subform. Okay. So let's go 
back into here. All right, back into the events. And actually, while I'm looking at it here, we can get rid of, oh, well, you can leave that there. I was gonna get rid of the order by, but leave that. Go to the events, go back to the on current event. Okay, when I click on a meal in this sub form, I wanna filter the parent form to show just that meal. You, you can search for it if you want to do it that way. I think filtering is just fine in this case. Maybe we'll change it later, I don't know. So how's this gonna look? Well, we gotta go parent dot filter equals show me the current meal. So meal ID equals meal ID of the record I'm on now in the subform. And then parent dot filter on equals true. Okay, save it. Throw in a debug compile once in a while. Let's close this, close it, close it, close it, open it. Okay, here's all my meals. Click on this one, look at that, see? Click on that one, huh? isn't that cute? Click on this one. See, this is a sub form in the header that controls the main parent form, which is basically just this, right? The rice, fish, and veggies, right? Just Rick's coffee. And these are the food items inside this meal. So it's behaving very similarly to this guy. Which I'll move over here now. All right, you click on this and you see the details in the footer. We don't want to confuse our users. So this kind of behaves the same way. Okay, you like it so far? All right, now the next thing I want to do is, the colors here are very confusing. You got dark blue, light blue, light blue, dark blue. I'm going to make it so the entire top of this form is light blue, and the entire bottom is dark blue. So it separates them even more. Same thing with the food, right? Let's make this entire top like lighter blue, and then the entire, or, or green, and the entire bottom like it is darker green. All right, so let's come into here. Now, what I, and this is one of the reasons why I left some space in here. What I like to do is, let me close that, is I am going to, let's make the top light blue. So I'm going to grab this color in here. So open up this property section here. I'm going to copy it right out of here. It's this color right there. That's the dark or the light blue. Copy it there. Let's put it up here. Let's put it in here. And it's already in here. I think that takes care of that whole section. Okay. Now for down below the detail section, I want all dark blue. So I want this shade of blue that's in here, which is that one. All right, that's gonna go in here and out here. And I think I got it. All right, save, close, open. All right, much better. So this much more clearly shows that this is the meal list. This is the meal down here below. Let's do the same thing with the food form. It's not quite so bad. I think really all we have to do is bring this light color up top. And I think I used, if memory serves, I used, yeah, I used these stupid theme colors. I hate the theme colors. So let's pick a different green from the standard colors. Let's go with this guy. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, oh, that's okay. Pick something slightly different. Uh, more colors. Let's go a little bit this way and a little bit that way. Like that. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so copy that. And we'll go down here with it. Okay, and up here I'm going to do a lighter green. So I'm still going to paste that in so I get a non-theme color. And then I'm going to go back to this palette guy. And we're just going to slide. Save it, close it. Oh no, I gotta get in here too. Okay. Design do and here. Paste it. Nope, wait, I got the wrong color. This color. Copy it. Paste it. There we go. Save it, close it, open it. All right, that looks much better. There's my food items. And there's my meal list. All right. Looking good. I also want to maintain the same standard of having that yellow highlight whenever we click. We don't we didn't put that in over here. So it's little things like that we got to take care of too. So right click design view. That is done with conditional formatting. So we'll start up here. Format, conditional formatting, the rule. Uh, field has focus and that. Yellow. Hit okay. Hit okay. Now this guy is going to be the same, but we got to make sure we include the bold. So format, 
conditional formatting, new rule, field has focus, and then go to this and make sure you turn that on too. Hit OK. Otherwise, you'll lose your bold. All right, down here, this one and this one, you can select them both together. Same thing. Da da da. Da da da. Da 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 da. Da da da. Blah blah blah. Blah blah. Alex Lifeson's uh, uh, Hall of Fame speech, right? Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Epic. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Feel this, okay. And there. Why save it, save it, close it, open it, and now you can clearly tell where you're sitting. Beautiful, I like it. All right. Now, now that I'm looking at these two side by side, this one down here allows you to use these buttons to scroll. This one doesn't because we're filtering. So maybe we'll change that. We'll, we'll do a seek and we'll find the right item. So you can still scroll back and forth this way. Um, and we need a way to add because right now if we hit the add new button, er, we get an error message. So we got to fix that too. And we'll start there in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. I just read something interesting about how they tried uh, many different uh, uh, voiceover actors to, to do that narration for the original 60s Batman show. And they, they couldn't find the right guy. So one of the producers just stepped in and did it. And he ended up doing it for the whole run of the show. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, random thoughts. <laughs> Members, you can watch right now because I got to do a bunch of recording today. So I'm probably going to do at least three or four of these. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for part 17. I hope you learned something. That was a pretty cool trick. I don't think I've ever done that before in a video where I made a subform in a, in a header that controlled the body of the parent form that had a subform in it. <laughs> pretty cool stuff, right? The, the things you can do with access. Anyways, live long and prosper, folks. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.